Hello everybody, Kabuto 3, one of many Scythe's remarkable CPU coolers. This one in fact does not come with a tower heatsink design. It's a top flow cooler that should apparently cool surrounding components and shouldn't interfere with high profile memory or VRAM heatsinks. Currently this Kabuto 3 comes in at roughly 45 US dollars, a fairly standard Scythe price so to speak. Thanks to Scythe for sending me this nice cooler to take a look at. Now in the packaging the CPU cooler with the fan already attached, so ready to be installed, all the mounting brackets for Intel and AMD sockets, as well as a little bit of thermal paste. Last but not least the installation guide. The Scythe Kabuto 3 first of all measures in at 130 by 125 by 149 millimeters, 720 grams weight, nickel plated copper base, one Glidestream 120 PWM 120 millimeter fan, 300 to 1400 RPM fan speed, 12 0.93 to 79 CFM airflow, noise level 4 to 28 decibels, socket compatibility, the most recent ones, Intel LJ1151 as well as AMD AM3 Plus and FM2 Plus. The LJ2011 socket is not supported which kinda makes sense. So now that the specs are aside, let's talk a little bit about the features here. As you can see this is a top flow cooler so the airflow is coming from the top rather than from the side as seen on tower designs. The top flow design comes with a bonus feature, that is it's also cooling surrounding components such as the motherboard VRMs, RAM and so on. The special design and shape theoretically also allow for the installation of high profile memory without the fear of any interference, not even with VRM heatsinks on the motherboard. Scythe is also implementing high heat pipes here which basically means two 6mm and three 8mm thick heat pipes are used. Altogether five heat pipes not bad. The fan is pre-attached right out of the box and so you're pretty much ready to rock here. When it comes down to looks I kinda like the design here. It's kept very simple and basic that's what we're used to see from Scythe after all. The installation is extremely easy. There's no backplate to install, you can simply make use of the cooler installation methods stock coolers make use of. Even though with a weight of 720 grams I was a bit nervous, it seems to work just fine even when putting the system in the usual orientation not as seen here on my test bench. Interference with VRM heatsinks is absolutely no concern here, but high profile memory, well there is very little interference going on. As you can see the module closest to the cooler is touching the heat pipes and the module in fact doesn't entirely go straight in. But then again these are super high memory modules, so I'll give this one a pass. Now let's take a look at how this Kabuto 3 performs like. Now as we're used to scythe coolers do offer decent cooling performance but not necessarily the best in their price ranges compared to strong competitors such as Cryork for instance. What I however truly admire about scythe is their constant innovative approach when it comes down to their designing of CPU coolers. We get a wide variety of offerings in all kinds of shapes for different purposes. But overall I really can't complain about the performance of this Kabuto 3. It delivers and practically is a good alternative to a stock cooler the same mounting mechanism is used. Therefore the installation is super easy and fast even for newbies. Removing the cooler unfortunately is a bit of a tedious job, especially when dealing with a motherboard with lots of big VRM heatsinks. But hey, only the mainstream sockets are supported, so there's no need to expect overclocking wonders. The fan wasn't audible at all to me on idle. On full load, yes, but it's sure one of the quietest CPU coolers I've dealt with so far. So without any doubt I'm definitely recommending this Scythe Kabuto 3 CPU cooler, Silver Ward. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.